Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain on our digital world and figure out the secret language that powers basically everything. Your phone, your laptop, all of it. We're going to find out why they all think using just two numbers, zero and one. But before we even get to computers, let's just take a step back and think about, well, us. Have you ever really thought about our numbers? Zero through nine. Why those 10 symbols? I mean, why is it that when we want to count past nine, we have to start mashing them together? You know, putting a one and a zero together to get 10. Well, the most popular idea is also the most obvious one, and it's probably staring you right in the face. It comes down to the original counting tools we were all born with. We have 10 fingers. It was just the most natural, simple, and intuitive way to keep track of things. But here's the thing. Just because this base 10 system is what we're all used to, that doesn't mean it's the only way to do things. Not by a long shot. In fact, you and I, we navigate a world full of totally different number systems every single day. And we do it without even blinking. Seriously, think about it. There are 24 hours in a day, right? Not 10. There is 60 seconds in a minute, 7 days in a week. These are ancient ways of counting that made perfect sense for tracking time and cycles, and they're still completely baked into our lives today. And this really gets to the heart of it. The number system we use is just a choice, a human invention, not some universal law of nature. The ancient Babylonians, for instance, used a base 60 system. And why 60? Well, because 60 is a fantastic number for dividing things up. You can split it cleanly by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12. It just worked for what they needed to do. It was practical. Okay, so this brings up a really fascinating question. If any system, whether it's got 10 symbols or 60, is working with a limited set of characters, how on earth can it express a number like 1,973, or a million, or a trillion? The answer lies in this incredibly simple but really powerful idea. So to really get our heads around this, we're going to use a simple analogy. Let's forget about numbers for just a second and imagine we're collecting and trading coupons at a store. This little mental game is the absolute key to unlocking how pretty much all number systems work. Now, the official name for this is positional value. All it means is that a symbol's actual worth, its value, changes completely depending on where it's sitting in the number. I mean, the 7 in 700 is worth a whole lot more than the 7 in the number 17, right? Same symbol, different position, different value. So here's how our coupon game works. You start by collecting coupons that are worth $1. Now, the rule in our base 10 store is that you can't hold more than 9 of any one type of coupon. So the second you get your 10th 1's coupon, you have to make a trade. You hand over all 10 of your 1's coupons and you get one brand new 10's coupon in return. Your 1's slot goes back to zero and the whole game starts over again for the 10's, then the 100's, and so on. This is literally what we do when we carry the 1 in math class. It's the same exact thing. So if you look at a number like 1973, you see it's not just a random string of digits, it's a recipe. This table shows us it's made of 1000s coupon, 900s, 710s, and 3 ones. Every number we write is basically just a list of how many coupons of each type we're holding. Okay, so we've pretty much mastered our 10 coupon system, but computers, well, they don't have 10 fingers. They have something much, much simpler. So now, let's see how this exact same logic builds the language of all modern technology. So, meet the binary system. If our decimal system is like a big store with 10 different types of coupons, then binary is a store with only two, a zero and a one. That's it. That's the whole shop. It is the simplest possible number system you can possibly imagine. And here's the really cool part. It uses the exact same coupon trading system we just talked about. The only difference is the rule for when you trade. Instead of trading up every 10 coupons, you trade up every two. So the values of the coupons aren't ones, tens, and hundreds. They're ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens. You get the idea. They're all powers of two. So this is the main thing to remember. The underlying logic, that coupon system, it works for any base. Once you get that, you realize binary isn't some weird alien language. It's just a number system with a really, really simple rule. You can only hold a zero or a one in any given slot before you have to trade up. But why? Why all this obsession with making it so simple? Why would we build our most amazing complex machines on the simplest possible number system? Well, the answer has nothing to do with abstract math and everything to do with the real world. It's all about electricity. You see, here's the fundamental thing we have to get. A computer is just 
well, it's a rock that we tricked into thinking. It doesn't understand the idea of a one or a zero. It's a physical machine. It only understands one thing, the flow of electricity. Is there voltage or isn't there? And this, this is where the genius of binary just shines. Those two simple symbols, one and zero, map perfectly to the two simplest states of an electrical circuit, on and off. High voltage can represent a one, low voltage or no voltage can represent a zero. It is the most direct, unambiguous way to translate our language of math into the physical language of a machine. So why is that so powerful? Because it's incredibly robust, it's reliable. I mean, just imagine trying to build a computer with a base 10 system. You'd need 10 separate stable voltage levels for each number. What happens if there's a tiny power surge? A 7 could get mistaken for an 8. It'd be a nightmare. But with binary, it's either on or it's off. There's no in-between. It's a clear, definite state, which makes the whole system way more reliable and resistant to errors. So using this on-off logic, engineers created these tiny little circuits called 1-bit adders. Each one is a simple little building block, and it does just one thing. It adds a single column of binary numbers. But then, by chaining them together, the carry out, that little one you carry over, from the first adder, just becomes the input, the carry in, for the next one in line. And get this, this is exactly where those terms you've probably heard, like 32-bit or 64-bit processors, come from. It's just talking about how many of these little 1-bit adders are essentially chained together, which tells you how big of a number the computer can handle in one single go. It's all built from that one simple repeatable block. So when you really step back and you look at the whole story, all the way from our 10 fingers, to the Babylonians tracking time, to the electrical pulses inside a tiny silicon chip, this really powerful theme starts to emerge. So why did we ultimately land on binary for our computers? It wasn't because it was more complex or more powerful in some abstract way. Nope. We chose it because it was simpler. It was the easiest, most reliable way to make an incredibly complicated thing, computation, actually work in the physical world. This just captures the whole spirit of what we've been talking about today. The mathematician S. Scudder said, Mathematics is not about making simple things complicated, it is about making complicated things simple. And binary is the ultimate proof of that idea. We took the messy, chaotic world of electronics and found the simplest possible mathematical language to describe it and bring order to it. And that really leaves us with a final thought to chew on. We used math to turn the chaos of electricity into pure logic. So, what other really complex, messy parts of our world are just out there, waiting for us to find the right simple language to finally make them clear? Thanks for joining me for this one.